<laughs> Your school had computers that could run Halo? Good lord. Combat yeah, evolved. Know, evolved. Right? Right? No, combat Dude, evolved. This, the PCs in my school would be lucky to run Dave at like fucking 100 <laughs> FPS. <laughs> All right, guys, so welcome back to the Ground Zero podcast, the official podcast of Lobby Zero, the Ground Zero for gaming. Uh, today, we have been uh, fortunate enough to have the folks from PC Peasants on for a conversation. We've got Rohin and Armand uh, today. What's up, guys? How are you feeling? So good. Yeah. yeah. yeah and and these guys have been in the scene um, for a while now. So I, I just think it's an awesome opportunity for us to have a conversation and just have a chat about a few things that we thought, you know, I mean, our, our guys, our audience have, have seen Armand do the LZ plays for uh, Resident, Resident Evil. Evil. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> finished, the, finished the game, what, yesterday? Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. So so there, there's some context there, like people okay. know who you are. Um, but yeah, hopefully we get to find out a little more about Rohin. Um, I've been looking forward to this conversation quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So... So really looking forward to this, man. Thanks for Dave. thanks for making the time, guys, uh, to have this conversation. Thanks for having uh, us. Absolutely, absolutely. And I figured, um, rather than like going into individual introductions and making it awkward, being like talk about yourself or whatever, I figured a better way to do it would be to talk about PC peasants, right? Like talk about the genesis um, and what's coming, and maybe within that story, you guys could probably. Just give some context about yourself and you know who you guys are, what you do. So like the genesis, you know, when right. like I think you guys started about five years ago because I did a little digging. I went all the way back to the first video that came out on PC Passions, and I think that was about five years ago. So I was really curious how you guys started off, like what happened and yeah. you know, how did it happen and how you guys met. So a little bit of the backstory. So um so like in 20, 2015, um yeah. there was a channel called Jags, just another gaming site. And it was run by this guy called Ishan Are, who I, I have the pleasure of working with even now, uh, even till now. Um, and uh, so he, he was one of the first gaming channels in the country. And uh, he and Arshishman Pradhan, this guy called Archie, uh, whose gamer tag is Fed. Uh, so right. Fed and Ishan, who's captain, they had, uh, they'd been doing, uh, they'd started live streaming in India. Like they were like the like oh, pioneers. Mm. Yeah. And uh, Ashi's from my college. He's like my a junior of mine, two years junior or something. And uh, so I met him in college, and uh, you know, I I I took him, I I ragged him, you know, uh -huh. asked him. I was like, "Hey, Facha, give me your intro and all that," because because uh, me and this other guy we were talking about Call of Duty in the in the canteen, and this guy was like, "Oh, are you guys talking about COD?" And I was like, "Who the fuck is this guy? Like, what?" <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck are you? He's like, oh, I just joined college. And so I was like, okay, give us your info. Yeah. And this guy was like, yeah, so physics honors, uh, you know, I love COD. I, I play it professionally and shit like that. Uh, he used to play it on the Xbox 360. Right. So I was like, bullshit. Okay. I was like, come, come. We're going, we're going to a gaming cafe in, this was in Delhi. Yeah. Uh, so we went to a gaming cafe in Kamlanagar and, and we played Rust, Modern Warfare right. 2, that map. And this guy fucking destroyed me, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> and I was pretty good, okay? So yeah. I was just like, shit, okay, this guy, this guy wasn't like, sh like screwing around. So he then went on to start this channel a couple of years later. And, uh, and then I got in touch with him. I was like, hey, man, like, I mean, of course, we stayed in touch throughout college. Uh, but I was like, hey, man, we should, we should do something. Like, so these guys were doing the live content and we wanted to, the initial idea was we do video content, like very much like what you guys are doing because, right. because YouTube was a predominantly a video platform. Yeah. I mean, it still is. So, um, so we were watching this, uh, YouTube content creator called Soviet Womble and, and like Counter-Strike was like, like my whole life and right. it was, and CSGO, uh, had just like come out and, right. uh, and we were playing a lot of Counter Strike, and and just another gaming site where like every everybody who played CS:GO in India had heard of this channel or had watched these guys live, and the captain was like this really hilarious streamer because he'd get so angry, like he wasn't that good at the game, but and he'd right, get right. so angry and he'd keep swearing, <laughs> and it was just it was so much of fun watching what the Jags guys did. Yeah. So I was like, hey man, let's 
let's do the same kind of stuff that Soviet Womble does. Let's like re- do recordings and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and edit it together, and we put subtitles, and right. so that's how we, you know, we started. So we before started, that, see- neither of you were like doing this by yourselves. Like, well, no, I didn't even know time. Rohin at the time. Um, yeah. Okay, gotcha, I came gotcha. in a little bit later. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Pretty soon after, but I think around a similar. Maybe, maybe a few we met. After. We met in 2015. End of 2015, yeah. And the first video went up around maybe like a couple months before that, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the first. I... So, so what's on the channel? Is that like the first content that went out, or has something been cleared out? No, not no, at all, no, right? Nothing's been cleared so, out. So it's the CSGO I should, stuff. I should probably remove <laughs> some of that content. It's really the, fucked the, up. Glo- the, the globally offensive uh, yeah, content yeah, streams, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and at the time, like, like Fett was, like, uh, becoming a caster. Like, this is before okay. he became, like, this really annoying prick on social media. And uh, so, like, so people still liked him. And he would, he would go around, like, the gaming circuits. And he'd show people these videos that we made. And people were like, hey, you know, this is actually good shit. You, I think you guys are onto something. Right. And, and then uh, Cocaine, I Love Cocaine joined the, the group. And Cocaine, it's funny how we met. We met through Counter-Strike, through okay. Global Offensive. In-game. And yeah, in-game, absolutely in-game. And, uh, you know, we've been friends since. And right. uh, yeah, I've met him in real life a couple of times as well, which is great. And this guy, so, so, so we were like, okay, we have the, but we needed somebody who was good. Okay. Right. Cause, cause we wanted a live streamer whose gameplay was good. Hmm. So I pretty much produced the show. Like I pretty much set the timings, pushed cocaine to like stream every day at 10 PM and like stuff like that. And he was the live streamer and Archie and I were like, you know, like Andy Richter and the Conan O'Brien show. Right. Did you guys right. also like cobble together some money and buy him like a card or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We also did that because this guy is, uh, this guy kept Anthony. complaining about the fact that he didn't, he wasn't getting enough frames while he streamed. Okay. So You're we right, bought him right, a right. GPU. Yeah. That was it. Was that your first investment, like legit investment, and in, into PC pads? Or I think I think my first investment was my mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right, right. Because you were doing audio stuff for for pc peasants or yeah yeah because we were very clear like that the sound had to be better than the video like mm. yeah. that was like very important for us gotcha. we wanted to make sure that the banter took precedence over because anyway people were watching at 360p back then or 480p so we gotcha. were like hey, it doesn't matter if you upload 720p videos you know right 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 yeah. so then so. you start you guys started doing that so when did how and when so i guess towards the end of 2015 is when you said you like armand met you yeah. so so how did that happen exactly how did you guys do? <laughs> so um i knew a guy i guess through a mutual friend would be the easiest answer um okay. i met a guy named prickly who right i met through another friend who went to school with me and then um prickly and me hung out a bit and then um, he said, hey, man, I want you to meet my friend, Rohin. Right, and so right, we right. just, I ended up at, we went to this bar down Thiranmir Beach that was like this cheap place to drink. And it was like okay. mostly empty. And it had a smoking right. room in the corner inside. So you could just smoke in this little like cube, like uh-huh. this little, you know, thing. And it was, cube. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, but then you could still see what's going on because it's like inside the place. And anyway, so I mean, I ended up meeting Rohin there. Uh, Rohin fell in love with me. Hands down. Yeah, I was like, I like this guy. And we also we had like we had this like mutual hatred of a couple people. Yeah, yeah. We had this mu- so we kind of bonded because like there's this there was this guy in my school who I fucking hated. Mm. And apparently like other grew up with this guy. Cause Chennai is a small place apparently. Small so place. so I was like, oh okay. And and then other was like, Yeah, I fucking hate that guy. And, <laughs> And I'm sorry, you guys have to bleep out all the sweating. Uh, but yeah, that's fine. Because there's going to be a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. No worries. Wait, is, it, is your mic popping? Is, is my mic anything? popping? Oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let me just adjust the game. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, anyway, we, we, we both hated this guy. And then this guy turns out to be a huge gamer. And yeah. And well, then- I, at the time, I wasn't. I mean, I, 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 I've been a gamer my whole life. But at the time, I was a gamer throughout my life until 
I guess I went to college in the U S and then mm. I had for the first couple of years, I had an Xbox 360. I had a great time playing it. I had a roommate who was into gaming. It was all good. But then I uh, figured out drinking and smoking was a lot more fun. <laughs> and I just Fair had enough. to sleep, drink, or study. One of the, you know, there was no time yeah. for gaming in the gaming. middle. Like social interaction became more important because, like, I don't know, I, I went to community college for a year or two. Right. And so it's a lonely time, like, if, when you go to community college. And anyway, so I didn't really game. And then I came back and I worked in Bombay where I didn't even have space for a TV. I stayed in this tiny room in my uncle's house. And yeah. I was basically busy morning to night with this like finance job that I got. And yeah. um, there was just no time to game. Like, yeah. And then right. I was really big into the gym at that point. So it was work, workout, yeah. eat, sleep, repeat the whole thing. Fair enough. So, uh, I, but then uh, what happened was I ended up moving to Chennai. Uh, we had a project here. I ended up quitting my finance job because I hated it. Okay. Um, I moved to Chennai and then I had a bunch of free time. Uh, right. there, were, there were spurts where I was really busy, but I yeah. still had to be there because people were coming to see properties and I had to be involved in all that stuff. So uh, I had a bunch of free time. That's why I ended up hanging out with Pippi. I met Rohin. And then I had a free house, essentially. I had this big house uh, okay. that I lived in alone right so everyone would just keep showing up like <laughs> multiple times a week to just hang out it was the game. it was the drinking house <laughs> the drink the chill spot a lot of yeah. debauchery you know and, the usual. and and i was just like dude you need to get a you need a game like a, get a gaming pc and and others i think others got back into gaming because of me and the, right no that's the, the thing was the, the chat, conversion right? easy like, or was he, was there resistance? Cause he was so like stuck up with the whole smoking, drinking situation. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. It's pretty okay. Easy. Here's the thing. I always, I, when I bought a, this is why I hate uh, gaming laptops. I bought <laughs> one that was supposed to be capable of it. That was and supposed to be it, what? It was supposed to be capable of running games. Oh, okay. Right. And then it would just not, it just didn't run anything. Mm. And it's like a thousand dollar laptop, you know, in 2007. And I'm just Thanks. like, you mother. <laughs> yeah. So. So I went with the console route and then I came back and I knew gaming PCs were a thing because when I was younger, my cousins had a gaming PC and I first played Halo 1 on it, mind blown, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I don't know if you guys maybe don't remember, but like Halo 1 was groundbreaking, like compared to any other game out there, Halo 1. So Halo 1 is combat evolved? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, so I, that was actually my first game that I ever played. Um, in school so like we had this we had this uh computer teacher who really didn't give a shit about teaching anything so we'd go to class and she'd be just like chilling and reading stuff and the whole class would just we all downloaded um combat evolved into all the pcs and we just play ctf like the whole time like you, your, com- your school had computers that could run halo good lord combat yeah, evolved, know, evolved. Right? Hey, no, combat dude, evolved was- the pcs in my school would be lucky to run dave at like <laughs> fucking 100 fps piece of shit like sky roads would like hang sometimes uh, uh yeah, yeah yeah so so yeah you were saying no halo one was was groundbreaking so yeah. i knew pc gaming was far ahead in terms right. of you know everything about it um and so i was looking to get it back into it i had the xbox 360 you know but um i hadn't really hooked it up i needed a converter because it was a us one and i needed to run a converter for it right I feel like I was a bit of a pain in the ass. And then I was also studying for the CFA because my dad kept pushing me into finance, but whatever. Yeah. Didn't really have time. But then um, I said, okay, I want a gaming PC. And I was supposed to get an iPhone. Like we went to okay. um, the iStore and they said, here's, you're supposed to, like my dad was like, here, get an iPhone 6S or whatever. Yeah. And he's the guy, the sales guy says, no, it's not come yet. You can get the regular six, but you might as well wait for the S that's coming out in a couple of months. And we're like, okay, cool. So I bought myself a 4S uh, for like 15,000 rupees on sale. Wow. And I said, okay, I'll take this, but I want the rest of the money into a PC. Hmm. And so I said, oh, like, okay, cool. So then I said, Rohin, great news. Like we can get a gaming PC. You know what I mean? The first funding has like, come in. Let me in, let me in, you know? Like this is a door, yeah. fucking open it, <laughs> you know? Let me in. And yeah. so him and... Uh, Fett um, came up with some specs 
Okay. I went and bought the exact specs. Right. And then two months later, they told me my PC's outdated. So <laughs> never, ever take your goddamn PC advice from these guys. They Wait, but isn't that, well, isn't that a big thing that PC Peasants does? Like uh, the whole tech advice situation? Yeah. No, no. He, he, we'll give other people great advice. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's I mean, just it's, you. Yeah. Okay. So the thing was, he's like. had like one fucking, you, I mean, he had a phone iphone budget for a gaming pc i'm sorry dude like, it was yeah. an iphone it was an iphone it's an what was the budget phone. again like what was 65 the for- 60k or something dude yeah like dude okay. come on but in 2015 that bot knocked you like it was easy. I, we gave I you was... the best specs you could possibly get but it's not our fault two months later it was outdated it's just a fact because i remember yeah. going through your channel um i was i was just digging today and i found this one uh video you were talking about creating a a budget build and i think it was around was it 45 i think you went as you low as do it. What, was that the just cause just cause videos no uh no i don't that, think so it was I, I didn't even watch the whole thing but i remember that like it was like a 45k build so mm-hmm. i i mean me personally i mean tech i think rahul is huh? tech fix was it tech yeah, fix? yeah yeah i think it was tech <laughs> fix yeah <laughs> No, I think Rahul, back yeah. in the day it was doable though you could right. build which yeah. is why when i said when i spent 65 or something i was like oh i'm gonna get a decent one you know? <laughs> and to be fair it did run decent everything ran okay. uh i was just Two pissed months? off when they hmm? no it was just ryzen right you, you bought a ryzen pc no no i had the i5 4460 uh, i5 okay yeah. with yeah, a that's like four gen yeah that's but like i think long time back yeah, yeah. Well, and then I, and then I got a GTX 950, which right. was like a I think a four GB card or something like that at the time, maybe two GB. Gotcha. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, but at the time you were only playing Counter Strike, so I mean it didn't matter. Like those are decent specs for a CS:GO PC. Oh, it ran CS. Yeah. Right. Uh, no worries. So yeah. like when when you met Rohin, let's you were saying end of around end of 2015, right? Or yeah, 2015, end of 2015. Yeah, but you never really did. You enter the PC peasants realm, or like it, it took you a while. So when I got the, come, yeah. when I got the PC eventually, um, I also invested in uh, this uh, Samson mic, the Samson Go okay. mic that I want for five thousand bucks, and the, the, which Why? they told me to buy. Okay, and then they're like, "Bro, it's picking up too much. You bought a shitty mic." And I'm just Wait, like, so <laughs> you, "You guys had the plan of streaming the whole time, like for Armand." Or... No, no, no. Uh, oh. At the time, they wanted to do the recordings and they just, you know, it was more, oh, including gotcha. me in, in some of gotcha, the videos, gotcha. yeah, was gotcha, like, gotcha. you know, a natural progression. So, yeah. I mean, to like go back to your question of the genesis of PC Peasants, the, the original idea was not tech news okay. or anything technology related. Right. The original idea was to to get the banter of like a couple of friends, you know, the gaming cafe, like, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. And Vime, but edited to like this perfect tight eight minute, nine minute video. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. subtitles for those of you who don't understand what the fuck we're saying. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And that was the formula. And um, yeah. and Soviet Womble was like our inspiration. Like, like we we just loved his bullshittery videos on CS:GO, and mm. so we were like, okay, we need to do this, and we need to yeah. just make it like us, like how we like have have fun and more indian right. Right. and uh, yeah and it, it worked and then it got really difficult mm. because it's a lot of work like right. like animating the subtitles how much were you like churning yeah. out like barely on... anything like okay. one video like a week okay uh, i mean archie was the one editing the videos right uh, i was quality control and uh, and uh, cocaine was the live streamer. Okay, so, so wait, but um, there was a stage where you guys were more focused on like the the post production stuff, right? Rather than streaming, or was was streaming always part of the scene? Did no, so in... streaming streaming came, I think, later. Yeah. So if what I'm, made you guys? Right. What made you guys switch? We got lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually a big part, uh, a, a, a part of the conversation that I wanted to get into, which was like, which I'll get into in a bit. But, um, but, but yeah, so right now, um, since then, you know, that was the genesis of PZ Peasants. And, and now, uh, you know, what's, what's, what's plans? What's plans for the channel? What's plans for the community? Um, you know, wh- what are you guys hoping to, to do with PZ Peasants? Is there like a, a way forward? 
for the community. I don't know. Like this I is had something yeah. Adit needs to answer because, like, right. I mean, <laughs> so I guess going forward, I, it's become clear that um, English content is is never going to be anywhere close to what the Hindi channels are doing. And most most of the streamers speak English, but they stream in Hindi. And it's that English thing where you have to like, the banter has to happen in Hindi. Right. Well, they, they can still speak, they still, all of them know English, but right. you know what I mean? But I don't have that ability to mm. communicate in Hindi. And so, right. and plus the accents, people come to my stream with like, who are you? Why do you have a fake accent? <laughs> you know, I play CSGO every day and someone's like, hey, fake, fake accent, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, bro. <laughs> you know like every every day every day i hear that a couple times and it's just like oh and they're like you're, oh, you're yeah. indian i'm like yeah i said why do you have an accent i said have you not heard of people indians who lived abroad like is that a <laughs> that is... fucking like is that alien level like you know concept to you um yeah. and so it's just one of those things where i don't know if me doing even if i even if i was regular even right. if i streamed every single day eight hours a day I wouldn't be even close to being at a sustainable pay level to do it full time. Right. In my opinion, unless I picked up a sponsor and that's right. something I don't want to do. Uh, right. I mean, I would like to, because you know, the paycheck's great. Uh, right. But at the same point, I also don't like being a shill. So, yeah. so it's, it's one of those like tricky ones where it's an industry where you need sponsors to make the money. Hmm. But to do that, you, you compromise a little bit on your integrity. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even for us, you know, like, so we, we've only been in actual operation, I think, for about three months now. And we've been trying to wrap our heads around, okay, what's the scene like? What, like, what are the spaces um, that, that we need to really understand, especially when it comes to content creation and, like, um, what can create traction? Because... I mean, our backgrounds definitely heavily influence like what the brand becomes for Lobby Zero and, you know, how what kind of content we want to push out. So for me personally, I'm less of a competitive gamer, like um, more of a AAA title. I, I'm the kind of guy who, you know, see the grass moving in Red Dead. And I'll just stare the shit out of that grass for like an hour and be like, yo, that is that's for crazy. Some people. That's crazy. So but then at the same time, you know, we have Rahul who's who's been in the competitive scene a little bit. And he's uh, he plays, you know, um, FPS uh, mostly, I guess. Um, okay. And then we have a couple of other guys on the team who are just from completely different, you know, spaces. But um, we, like me personally, I grew up watching um, creators like from the West, right? Like, a, a, I guess a lot of the consumption of content until very recently has been like that, even for even for the audience in this country that that are. Uh, you know, um, kind of in the gaming space, at least PC and console, because the bulk of the content came from that side of the world. So when I found myself in India um, after a, a, a wild turn of events, my, the plan wasn't to be in India. Like I, I was I was planning to just stay in Singapore. My family's there. Uh, I just figured, you know, I get a job there, settle there. But then when when I figured out, OK, this is where I'm going to be like for a while then i was like you know and when this opportunity came around where we could make lobby zero happen um now i'm slowly starting to realize like the the content scene these are the big challenges that we're gonna have to tackle because yeah. i think i come from a very similar mental space as you wow. do so i'm trying to figure out you know what, it... what are the ways in which yeah so i i think i disagree with both of you see no, no, hold on hold on hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the on the uh, I speak English English content isn't consumed. I think that's BS. Okay, yeah. I I that's just it. think I just think like well I, just 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 I, I need to have I a disagree. strategy. No, no, I, I disagree because I play every single day, right? And I deal with your average viewer, let's say, right? I play Counter Strike on community servers, and you will not believe the amount of hostility I get just because of my accent. Not through anything else. I'll just say, hey, uh, 2CT, fake action bunker, Ben Kilow, and it just goes on. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? I'm yeah, not, and that's, I'm, that's I'm, content. Come on, I'm not, man. I'm not, I'm, not antagonizing, I'm not antagonizing anyone. They're just hostile, right? 
right? And there's yeah, this, yeah. there's this like, there's this like, I, and I and I feel like this is your average viewer of any of these streamers. And what happens is, is there's this like innate or uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, rejection of anyone that has an accent or doesn't speak a local language, and, and it, it happens all the time to me. Like, I mean, Rohin doesn't play like the community servers, like you know, he plays Tarkov. Yeah, but I mean, not anymore, but but, I but not with the accent, though. I, no, I not with this accent, bro. I no, get, for, I get me, railed it was on. For me, it was different. I got railed on for being a shitty player. Yeah, that's, that's different. <laughs> that's even worse, though. Okay. No, you I'm a good on player. Me. And then, like, I get people, but, like, dude, that you try to peek something, your teammate's shooting your head. You're like, fake yeah. accent, mother. It's like, oh, my God. Bro. I mean, I guess yeah. my, my question is, at least my statement was less of people don't. It's not that people don't watch people who speak English or creators who speak English or, you know, um, has an accent or whatever. It's more of um, now as the regional scene is developing and like kind of, kind of picking up pace. I've, I wonder that the rift might be a little more clearer and there's an easy allocation of audience because they know, okay, you know what you have these creators out here and I would rather watch uh, regional creators who, you know, f- create content in that space rather than, um, you know, like uh, someone like us. I don't know. I mean, that I, Rohin was about to say something. Um, okay, think, uh, so as long as we have people in India going out and watching stand-up comedians right. do, do stand-up in English, yeah, we're yeah. good. We're good. Don't worry about it. Okay, right, yeah. and those and that number of people is increasing and increasing and increasing and gaming is now hitting the mainstream it it mm. is it's it's on its way it's not there yet but it is right. and there is going to be demand for content in english whether it's with an accent uh, yeah. which anyway people are consuming if you watch linus tech tips or uh, js2 sense or soviet bombel or uh, whatever any of these guys uh, jack to frag uh, jack frag sorry um you're watching. You're, you're an Indian watching someone with an American accent. Why yeah, the fuck can't you watch no, absolutely. an Indian? Uh, why why can't you be an Indian who watches an Indian with an American accent? Right. Of course you can. Okay. There's it's, this rejection of it. I'm telling you, bro. No, People no. People reject I, I, it. I'm telling you. As, okay. I, I our, think you're too sensitive. Then. One of I, our most loyal viewers. Okay. Let me. Let me. I'll, I'll just bring this up. I brought this up in chat a couple times. Okay. Um, where you know, Sacha. Okay. Uh, one of our most, he comes to every stream, guys, guys, amazing. We love him. Right. And yeah. I said, and we, I talked to him once and I was like, so how did you anticipate like this, the, the handover when Rohin stopped streaming and I took over? Mm. Right. Like, how did you react? And he's like, at first I was like, who's this fake accent piece of shit, you know, like, and that's, that's his initial reaction. This is a guy who consumes tons of American content, mm. right? He watches Netflix. He watches everything out there. He speaks in English. But yeah. the second he sees an Indian talking with an American accent, he thinks it's fake. He thinks it's a facade that I'm trying to put on. And that is where I think I struggle because people literally come in, say, who are you? Why the hell do you have this accent? Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, I face this chat. I face this question in chat. I face it on community servers. Yeah. And I think there's this instinct to just reject an Indian with an American accent because they're just like, no. That's that's if you're Indian, you speak with an Indian accent. If you're American, you speak with an American accent. Yeah. And right. when I think it's an issue now, Rohin thinks there's an audience for it. Sure. I mean, and I guess there is in stand-up comedy, com- comedy. I think right now, but even that, it's like tiny compared to the local stuff. Um, no, obviously, yeah. like, we're definitely yeah. going, English is definitely going to be in the minority. But like uh, yeah. back when PUBG Mobile was blowing up. I mean, I didn't have just an Indian audience. And I've said, I've said this before uh, as well. I've, I've told you how this. I had people from Dubai watching me, Indonesia watching me, right. uh, Thailand, Malaysia. And I, I had Russians watching me for fuck's sake. Okay. <laughs> so like, I, I, I don't think it's about the accent. It's about like, it's about putting out the content. Like just, it, there is a grind that you gotta like, like like you gotta do it man you just gotta fucking be regular you gotta put put out the grind and uh you have to build a community that's that's the most important thing and in the in the five years like uh i ran the channel 
I that was my main focus. It wasn't about making money, which I know it is for you. Uh, but for me, uh, the money just sort of, I got lucky, like with the Nvidia sponsorship and yeah. the HP and then the Intel, uh, and b- because I had some business background working with my dad and the family business, right. I was able to like you know figure out okay, how does this work in the US? Yeah, I made my rate cards. I said okay, hey, these are my rate cards. Yeah. This is how much I charge you for, like, say, a laptop review. This is how mm. far I'm willing to go as far as far as uh, as far as my ethics are concerned. Like, okay, right. because like in India, uh, most brands would just give you a product, and they'd say, "I only want you to talk about the good things." And I'm like, "Look, <laughs> all right, there's five good things and there's five bad things, but I'll make it three bad things." Right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. How That's does that sound? Yeah. Authenticity thing, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, but but as Adit said, like, um, otherwise you're not making money off this because like you need to have the numbers that like yeah. you know the Hindi streamers have to get yeah. that kind of money. And that's the thing. But, yeah, yeah. But I managed Which, to still yeah. manage to earn quite well from sponsorships and brands, right. uh, even though we were a small channel. So I right. think it's possible. I think from a language point of view. Um, I've just been trying to dig a little bit and try to understand the scene as well. And I was going through some stuff uh, in my digging. I was just, I actually just Googled the stuff that uh, Rohin popped up in. Right. And there was this one uh, Red Bull article that was done a while back, I think in 2018. And I think Rohin was quoted. Um, And you were talking about, and this is really where I'm coming from, like from my statements, which is when it comes to streaming, like the regional languages really help right in terms of in terms of building your community and building your audience so i guess the 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 angle that i'm coming from is from the perspective of perspective of building community you know what whatever kind of creator you are and if you're trying to build community in a space like gaming um you know how what role language plays and i guess you have different kinds of creators right like you have or entities rather you have a creator you might have like a solo creator or you might have an organization that is an amalgamation of creators and uh different things like that but this was part of the conversation that i wanted to get into which was more attached to like um advice for streamers but it again ties into this conversation which is like how regional languages could help and even when you look at i guess tournaments like um I think Red Bull's Campus Clutch is one, if I'm not wrong. When you look at the streaming numbers and uh, the the traffic that's coming in, like, do you do you feel like regional languages really drive the 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 numbers rather than like English? You know, and India as a market, you're gonna have to take that into consideration, right? If you really want to try to make it as a streamer. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, uh, in my current job, I have the opportunity, like. Uh, work with different language, different languages, and right. and one of the calls that I made in Jan or Feb was get the Malayali streamers. <laughs> <laughs> I remember telling somebody in my team, like, I'm like, why are they no Malayali streamers? Get all the Malayali streamers, and they were like, but, but sir, and I was like, no, <laughs> get them, <laughs> and they joined um, the org and and the numbers that they pulled in. Holy oh, fuck. Yeah? Okay. Like, right. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And, and, and they were all like, how did you know? And I was like, because like, if you go, like, have you ever seen a Rajnikanth movie in a, in a theater? Yeah. Okay. okay. In a, in a Tamil theater. Okay. The, the audience goes bananas. Okay. It's, yeah, it's yeah. hilarious. It's like an entire trip. Okay. And I'm not Tamil by the way. I, I'm Bengali, but it's, it's this fucking trip. Okay. And like, I, and I, and back when I was I was consulting for this uh, gaming company in in Chennai, uh, I I had to I had to sort of uh, build a gaming community, and because it was based in Chennai, hmm. uh, we were like, okay, let's start with the Tamil community. And um, what I learned in that experience was that the Tamil gaming community is a very highly engaging, passionate, hungry and largely ignored com- commun- community okay like right. they're ignored by brands they're ignored by uh you know like all the mainstream stuff that's happening in gaming and i was just like dude this is wrong like yeah. like this is this is money lost this is uh, eyeballs lost what, hmm. what what the fuck are brands doing 
you know and i've had these arguments with brands i can't name this this is uh, name which brands but i've yeah. had these arguments with brand reps surprisingly they were all north indians <laughs> and they were like <laughs> they were not getting it and i'm like right. and i and i i can't explain it to them because i'm like you have to live in chennai to understand what i'm talking about and uh, and that's what uh, and when I, and when i did that project i realized yes regional is the way to go so if you can mm-hmm. activate the telugu streamers the tamil streamers the kannadiga streamers the marathi streamers shima legend lives is like an yeah. example yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a reason i i i said yes to managing him back then because i was because right. i could see his potential um yeah. and uh, yeah regional content in fact regional content can sometimes do better than hindi which is the mainstream mm. language which is the majority uh, spoken language so gotcha. i think brands need to like work on this like right. yeah do you yeah. think from do you think from a grassroots level or um where like for example you know a big thing that comes with lobby zero is when we're looking out like a you know with the three verticals one of the verticals being content a big activity that we want to kind of execute on under content is obviously collaborations with creators right um and trying to do like really cool creative stuff like the one we did with um uh, armand and and you know different ideas so do you think from the grassroots we should just look at getting creators from different regional languages or or do we do we focus in on one space first build out and then you know maybe look around for more depends on your funding right 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 right, right. <laughs> i mean yeah no but yeah i mean let's say let's say if we have a certain budget you know and we're like okay cool this month we want to look at five five collaborations with creators um do we do we try to dig into those regional spaces and try to find creators in those areas or do you think it would make more sense to uh, i mean the reason like when i was doing my digging uh, obviously we were starting from like scratch and we were just like cool i'm going to jump into youtube and i'm going to just look at creators gaming creators and then i think sorted by region like uh, near near me and I, i i saw a bunch of creators right and i guess one filter for me when i was trying to find creators and all that obviously is cuz i have this language the lack of understanding of language so there is a barrier there so i wasn't able to identify um other creators from other regions or regional languages so i had that filter on but then obviously when i saw armando i was just like okay cool like i understand this and you know the frequency is very similar he's a funny guy and i i just went straight into that but i guess it's a mindset question you know um for me it it is taking a little more training of the mind to look at india from a regional perspective because i think you can either go all out and try to build something for the whole place in one language or i'm thinking do we would it make more sense to focus in on one region first and build it for that community maybe the malayali community in kerala you know and um, the tamil okay. community in tamil okay okay so so from a business standpoint i would say don't start with regional like right start with the mainstream like i would start with hindi mm. okay and build that first because right. honestly like if you succeed with that then you are likely to succeed with regional content content right. creators so succeed right. with that first um uh, learn the space um you'll have your hurdles like you'll have like working with creators uh is not easy because most creators are like under 20 or like in their 20s mm. and 20 year olds are the worst <laughs> <So> <laughs> And uh, I don't know how old I don't know how old you guys are, but like, I'm uh, I'm 23. Yeah, so you're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'm like late 20s, so I guess I'm I should uh, be out of that. Ah, uh-huh, then you're fine. Bro. <laughs> yeah. No, that's why that's, what, that's, that's, that's why we're on the we're on the yeah, yeah. I've got him on the team because I know yeah. I've got to negate whatever. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think like even yeah like uh, Rohan had just mentioned we had like a couple of instances like you know where we contact. uh you know couple of people like you know creators itself and they kind of look at the team and like majority of them are like you know the uh, uh the uh, for, uh younger side of the 20s 
so then they are like oh bunch of kids like you know what do they know like you know i'm going to just run them over and get whatever i want sort of a thing so like you know that kind of <laughs> this yeah, is like yeah it goes go both ways you know yeah either way yeah so i mean um coming back to your question like whether you should hit everywhere or just one place uh i i think it's better to focus on working with creators who uh who share your passion mm. like who are like yeah. Yeah, that's a good like point. Like I I I ruin relationships right. like <laughs> with people and partners j- just for my channel, you know. Mm. I miss weddings and birthdays and and other parties sometimes just so that I could finish my stream. You know, I was like 10 to 11:30 or whatever. That was my stream timing. I finished yeah. that and then I do uh, then I go back to life. Right. So, uh you need to meet people like that. who are right. that serious about streaming dedicated mm-hmm. yeah and they also need to be entertaining <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh yeah okay. and and also like um, or required it <clears throat> and technically like you know they need to be able to understand the platform yeah because mm-hmm. there's a lot of seo uh which is which 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 is involved in in youtube you need to know these things mm-hmm. you know to get the visibility You need to know what's trending and playing what's trending. You need to take these decisions, which are right. not always easy, especially if you like playing just say FIFA, you know, yeah. and, and like PUBG is trending, and you're like, no, I'm I'm gonna continue playing FIFA to like ten viewers, like yeah. that doesn't fucking work. Okay, <laughs> like like stop doing that. So, uh, you know, so you need to find creators who can who have the maturity to know when to pivot. and mm. who understand the value proposition that you bring to them right. and they're like okay cool like this yeah. this is a long term thing or this is a short term thing and yeah okay we're in yeah. so absolutely no and, I, i think i just like yeah. to take this opportunity to thank uh, you guys cuz armand just um willing to do that thing and i realized i think a couple of days ago when you did the last stream for resident evil that was like a like more than 4 hours like you went for the final yeah. stretch right and and i realized like you know i mean the fact that you, you you just did that to help us out and and to be able to do that collab it was the first time that we were doing uh content of that nature and for mm-hmm. us, for us to initially get on and have something to work with um you know it was really cool it, it was our, it was our first experience as a team to just get that and chop it up i mean it took us some it took us a while but it had a very crucial role in us trying to figure out our creative cycles and how can we you know chop up the content you and you're a funny guy dude like for real you're like a legit hilarious guy i like um, to think so but <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm funny in my own head you know what i mean like you know and then with other people find it funny i don't know but i laugh at yeah. myself way too much you know? so it's like yeah yeah but yeah i just wanted to thank you guys for you know taking that on and doing that collab um but uh-huh. so like we just Welcome. talked about it from a brand perspective right but then now let's say from a streamer that's or or, or somebody who's planning to get into the scene and i've 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 been seeing like armand i guess the grind's been quite real lately right i i, I see you going on quite regularly like on on a range of games why well, like i don't no. i don't like to play the same no? game over and over again no uh, he's okay. not he's not regular please uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's been more regular I, i i had an ear thing going on oh yeah for, yeah. for like right, 10 okay. days which was the gap uh, and then before that something else had popped up okay um these are all excuses man i didn't envision uh, uh, I, I, i couldn't hear i couldn't hear out of my i couldn't you know the best part about it was that i couldn't hear my mom just going ah, sometimes <laughs> but uh so i I'm, honestly i was standing right next to her and she was like yelling at me and i just could <laughs> barely hear it and i was like yeah so one of the perks right. but that's how bad my hearing was i couldn't hear yeah. shit i had to put everything on max volume i could bare, barely hear it i got it taken right. care of and then i i think i was back to streaming within a couple of days but yeah so there was a small break um but yeah i usually do try to be pretty regular but i got to say like i said i i've mentioned this before that neither rohin nor i depend on the stream for income right, i want right, to make right. money out of it but yeah. until it picks up mm. i can't dedicate more time to it than my other activities for sure for sure right because i need to focus on getting yeah. paid first right and and i guess it's mm. one of those things as a new streamer i think i think what you 
entering the space, I think you're going to have to do it and not make any money. It's, be, it's like doing an unpaid internship for like a year, yeah. I think, <laughs> right. is the best way to put it. You need to work eight hours a day, you know, know. be that unpaid internship. Two years. Two, Two years. years. <laughs> okay. You know? But do you guys suggest like, like you might as well do this as a side gig first and like build it out with a community and then- Absolutely. If you feel like it's a it's something you can transition into full time, that's how you should do it. Yes, yeah. because yes. that's the smart thing to do. But at the same point, <laughs> yeah. I don't think you got, you you stand less of a chance of growing a community if you only do it as a side gig. I mean, look, there's Raka Zone who was working in Accenture, and dude, that and, guy didn't sleep for like two years. Yeah, or I something. mean, yeah, he, he. I mean, he he, he would come back from work at like nine and then start <laughs> streaming by 10 he'd be live till four in the morning i don't know how he did it man but and then go it. to work the next day and this is somehow his cycle and i was just like i thought he was lying by the no, way no no he was absolutely <laughs> I, thought, I was like there's no way this guy's streaming till four in the morning playing gta so like whatever the hell he was playing at the time um yeah. or doing whatever yeah. he was doing csgo he played a bunch of csgo at the time and stuff like that. i thought he was lying I, I there was like there's no way this guy has a tech job if he's streaming for like six hours or whatever, mm. however long he was streaming at night. And uh, turns out he wasn't. So props to that guy. That guy apparently is an insomniac who just doesn't sleep. I don't know how to say it. No, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it did catch up to him eventually. Like, by the time like we started talking about like, because cause he, he kept seeing PC peasants get all these brand deals and he was just like, dude, how do you do this? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, man, just like make a PPT, dude. Like, what the fuck? It's that simple. And he was like, oh, hey, can you do this for me? I was like, yeah, sure. And then uh, it caught up to him. Like, uh, so yeah, after a point, like he had to have the call, the, the talk with his manager. And, and and then he was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to go full time. But mm. you gotta make sure that the money keeps coming in, and right. and that put pressure on me as his like man as his manager at the time because I was like, oh fuck, like yeah, this guy yeah. this guy is taking the plunge. Yeah. Um, right. But, right. But honestly, like yeah, uh, for me, like my parents supported me a lot, mm. and uh, I was working in the family business, so you know I'd work like ten to ten to six, and then come back, you know. And I'd have enough time to like stream. So it was good. Yeah. So do you guys feel, I guess, I don't, I guess this is part of being in India. Are you guys feeling um, the pull between PC versus mobile? Cause you guys are this brand, the brand that you've built or like you, you, you've, oh, you've, there was a full pull and I wasn't part of it. That's, that's what happened. A full? Or, What's that? Well, I see. No, Rohin was part of it. I think Rohin felt the pull. I think he went to the whole mobile gaming thing, right? First one to stream. I fucking, fucking started it, bro. Right? First one to do it in India. And which yeah. is why we, right. we ballooned up. This is before I was even streaming. But he would call right. me like, like sometimes you're like right before he streamed. He's like, bro, I'm tired. <laughs> but he was getting like a thousand people to watch him. You know, unheard yeah. of numbers at the time, I think. Right. Uh, nobody had a thousand people watching them at the time. No, no. Right. People... People, no, uh, people did people did but, nobody uh, had a thousand every stream bro yeah every stream no no so okay so um so how it, how it happened was um when pubg mobile was announced um hmm. archie okay so so there's one thing about archie that uh, is very fascinating is that this guy can uh, point out trends like right. he's very good at spotting trends and so he called me up and he said look man download an android emulator uh, or buy an elgato and i was like hey man i, I i'm not buying an elgato which is the the capture card the capture card oh okay yeah, gotcha yes for uh, capturing playstation nintendo and you know right. phones so he's like uh, okay get 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 like an emulator and and just stream pubg mobile and i was like yeah and we were getting about 60 viewers the channel was kind of dying and i was like right. okay cool i'll do it i did it one day and i was just like uh, we got like 50, 50, 60 viewers again. I'm like, dude, mm. this isn't working. And he was just like, look, man, just, just stick with it. And by the time it was the fifth day, I think, or the sixth day, I had 800 viewers. And Blair, yeah. who was the CSGO caster, and I was like shaking because a lot of people, when they see that number 800, they don't imagine 
the number of people watching right it. right, yeah. right 800 right. was the entire size of my school okay. yeah yeah absolutely so, I, I also think about that sometimes I, I look at the numbers on youtube i look at every creator that i watch or content that i watch i look at these numbers that I, I see the views and i see the subscriber count and i realize I, I get desensitized to that shit and i don't realize the size of that audience and so like yeah like that's yeah, something I, and yeah. so like I was just like I was watching the numbers fucking blow up and I was I was like quaking in my in my shoes and 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 Blair messaged me uh on WhatsApp and he's like you got this and I, and I was like all right okay let's do this and uh yeah and 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 then it just kept and then the PUBG mobile official channel came and said hi in the chat or something oh wow so like uh, yeah. and the guy behind the youtube channel his name is uh, uh, harkaran like we got pally and then he gave me the official emulator he did i think i was one of the first people in the country to get it and i was the f- uh, first person in the country to get the custom rooms and stuff like that mm. and uh, he i also got the opportunity to like do like a 10000 rupees like the first ever community pubg mobile tournament you know right and right, right. uh and i was just like holy shit this is this archie was right this is like going to be huge mm. and yeah so i forgot what we were talking about no so i i guess i was talking between. about yeah exactly the pull between pc and and mobile and, and yeah. what i was going to say is I, I think i was listening to one of the podcasts you were having with i think fet was there you um grim Grim- yeah, I think it was Grim. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. Grim was there, and you guys were talking about how you know you you you've played PC since the beginning of time. Like that's that's yeah. what you yeah. grew up you grew up on grew up on rather. Um, so when you made that transition, w- were there like, what do you say, um, a dissonance? You're like you're so all of a sudden you're playing on your phone or you're playing on an emulator, and now you're creating content off of this space. Was there a dissonance? I wouldn't necessarily say better or worse, but just like this rift of like, oh, this feels weird because it's so different and like, you know, not something that I'm used to. Not really. So, so I'm somebody who, who I'm like a gamer gamer, like okay. in the sense that I play everything. Right. All right. I mean, uh, I mean, I have one of these. So like, gotcha. <laughs> like, you know, so like right, right. Uh, for me, I, I will play. Okay. So I, again didn't grow up in a very wealthy family so right. like i didn't have like the playstation until like the slim came out and uh my uncle got it down from the us so like uh for me uh the first game i played was wolf 3d on my uncle another uncle's ibm laptop which was the, mm. like the first thing yeah. yeah and uh and after that i was like holy shit and i didn't like it that much but i was like it was crazy when the attack dogs come so i I've, I've played i tried to play every like everything i could okay so for me tra- uh, going from pc to mobile was not a big deal in fact like call of duty mobile with a with a you know one of those controllers is is it feels so good like it's it's almost like playing on a playstation without the rumble feedback so i'd say for me it wasn't a big deal and uh, but i would always go back to pc gaming because i think mouse and keyboard is just uh, from an input standpoint it's right. it's the precision you get is much when it comes to like cuz i predominantly play shooting games it's mm. just much more comfortable for me yeah but yeah i i don't think i uh, i think the the pull between pc and mobile just happened like naturally when pubg mobile grew up and i and i was like okay so now i am a pubg mobile streamer right you know? right, right. Yeah. gotcha gotcha sounds good um i guess uh, with reg- with regard to streaming right and what's happening in the country now like i'm talking about like india in general um like at least from my observations and and what i've seen like that is the space that most of the creators that i'm seeing in the space in gaming that's what they're like doubling down on and and you know you made the comment earlier like how that's the choice of content creation if you're feeling you know <laughs> lazy but but i'm curious to see, you know to, uh, you know to find out like what you think about between post production or post produced content versus you know like the streaming scene like um in fact there are some channels that jump on it's literally just 
pages and pages of you know three four hour streams you know um instead of instead of like really concentrated edited well produced you know piece highlights. of content highlights yeah i think like if you're streaming for that long then it's tough to edit your own videos as well yeah. on top of that and number two mm. if you have to pay an editor then hopefully you're getting enough money to pay an editor and still be profitable on that like i think right so just based on an income standpoint i don't think it makes sense so you're gonna live stream most of the time unless you can edit yourself right. um and then but you have the time to then stream and edit and yeah. then post and then so i think mean, that's just like a full-time job right there i think so unless you do four hour streams you can't edit you're gonna spend a couple hours editing it mm. have you guys ever like tried doing both like live streaming and editing I try to pay an editor. That guy won't edit my videos. I try to pay him. I'm like ready to pay him. I'm like edit my goddamn videos, and the guy's like, yeah. yeah. And then I'll just sit there for like three weeks, you know, <laughs> just waiting, you know. I, so I I did I'm, I did that for a while, and and yeah, it's it's just that like it's tiring. It's tiring to yeah. live stream and edit your own videos. And then, to be and to be honest yeah. with you, I don't want to outsource it at the same time, you know, because right. like. Like there's a specific amount of like, like I want the, I, I, yeah, I want the cuts to be like at, the, yeah. at this moment, yeah. and yeah. it's very difficult to get people to like do that. Like if you see Anthony Pitt, there's this Rainbow Six Siege live uh, content creator, stream, yeah. mm-hmm. and he his 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 video edits, there's just magic, right. and, and there's nobody, and he does one video a month. Because right, like right, right. editing at that level is just it's fucking insane, okay? Yeah, and it takes time, and yeah. uh, and so I don't think like that's something you can outsource, you know. Yeah, and I guess that's that's what I'm trying to get at, which is from a plausibility of, you know, okay, this is could possibly get a good rate of return in the sense that this has a higher chance of getting some high quality traction and. And getting a little more exposure because the effort that's gone into creating that piece is um, obviously more than than what you would do by jumping on a stream and doing a three-hour stream, right? Like, like, what do you guys think? Like, do you feel like, don't you think that trade-off kind kind of cancels off uh, in a way? Like, is is it harder to grow and get grow an audience as a streamer versus somebody who would take, let's say, uh, and put some time into editing and pushing stuff out from the get go like concentrated pieces of content post produced i have to, in my opinion rohin probably has a different opinion but in my opinion people watch you because they like you and they get to know you through mm. questions and chat so then yeah. based on your answers or how you react to certain questions or scenarios they get to see it uh, like live straight off the bat and they're like okay this guy seems cool i'll subscribe do you know what i mean right. as opposed mm-hmm. to they might subscribe if they really like your video, but they don't know mm. you. So in that growing yeah. a community context, I think you have to live stream more than uh, the other one. Right. Okay. Rowan, do you, how do you feel about that? Man? Well, it depends on the platform. So like okay. if you're on Twitch, obviously um, it's a healthy mix, mix of uh, live streaming long hours and having every other social media active like mm. instagram uh tiktok um, snapchat uh, twitter you have and youtube of course uh if you're just focusing on youtube as your main platform like then i would say um three hour live streams and 10 minute videos at mm. regular intervals gotcha. uh, this is this is like a formula i've heard managing a lot of large creators who are all one two million subscriber plus in the gaming right. industry right. This, this is what i've heard this is what they're all they all swear by they're all saying hey man you do this and and they're also like you have to you have to make videos which are like mm, relevant to like the meta so mm. like if there's a specific meta that's going on in a specific game that you're making a video on like say counter-strike and some new uh, operation comes out then like for that one week you should be making content on that operation right. because people would want yeah. to know more or you know and and it's 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 much easier and and people want to uh people want to know it from their favorite creators 
So like, mm. uh, what's that guy? Uh, Warall, right? That Counter Strike. Yeah, Warall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he like his his entire stick was just that, you know, like yeah. he would in depth you... analysis of the game yeah, itself, and, like and maps. it was yeah, and every time a new weapon came out, he he tell you about spray yes. patterns and stuff like that, and that might not be relevant to like what you do in your live streams, uh, yeah. but that works. Okay, like. It, it 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 sort of be as long as your videos are relevant, your live streams don't have to be, you know. Um, right. But at the same time, you need to be playing what's trending, and it's very important that you you're playing what's trending, unless you're part of this very niche like community, like, uh, and it's just one game, and you're known for that one game, and uh, that one game, like Tarkov, SK from Tarkov, and you're like this fantastic player, and and people. People watch you just for your gameplay. If you're if you're if you're one of those kind of creators and you just your gameplay is just like phenomenal, then you can get away with just frag movies and right, like yeah. and like kill montages and that's that'll work. That'll be fine. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess to, just to circle back quickly into the mobile versus PC thing, right? <laughs> I've been thinking about what the situation is here and like how, how you know PUBG's blown up and the mobile platform has blown up. Um, and I guess the one thing that I wanted to touch on and get your opinion on is like, so when I see this, I'm inclined to think that, okay, because of the, you know, affordability of this platform, it has made the population of the country functional, like when it comes to gaming and they've been introduced a, a, a big chunk of the population that may not have been gaming has been introduced to this space and they're really like diving into it. Um, so while mobile in and of itself is blowing up and getting a lot of traction and is a market in and of itself, um, do you feel like it's, it's, it's a gateway into opening up? It's just a matter of time before people transition or not even transition exclusively, but like move into PC and console as the costs or, you know, as a cost of the product on, on the PC side. At maybe if manufacturing uh, starts happening here or or um, even if as the economy gets better and spending power gets better, uh, do you feel like it's just a gate it can be a gateway into those platforms like majorly mm. so okay uh, if we were if you were to take the example of like say free fire and like pubg now bgmi um one of the reasons, of course, yes, being on phone makes it more affordable, makes it more accessible, and obviously the number of gamers on phones are they out they far more than you know like PC. Like yeah. if you have to like compare like PC is like one percent, one percent maybe of, right. of what mobile gaming gamer number of mobile gamers that are there Correct. in India. But there's also another a very important factor is, <coughs> is that the publishers have done a lot to grow the ecosystem, especially like before the Tencent ban and all that, uh, Tencent built what is modern esports as we know it. And now Garena is doing the same since 2019, 2020. Mm. And, um, you know, that's, that's very important. Right. Um, if we and now that I've heard Riot Games is also looking to expand in India, and you know there's a job position open for like the country manager and all that. Um, I don't know if they're going to bring Valorant Mobile or they're going to get bring Val, uh, Wild Rift, but suppose they bring Valorant PC and in like a really and I think the Valorant Championship is is going on right. Uh, uh, yeah, VCC yeah. I think has started today. Huh. Yeah, the so, qualifiers have started here. Yeah. Yeah, so that so they're already there, and obviously they license that. They pick hmm. the uh, the they picked Nordwin, the, uh, the TO Nordwin, to yeah. do that, right? So that's the start, and I think that could be that could be like the rise of PC gaming. So you need you need the publisher of the game to say, hey, okay, let's invest in this emerging market. Okay, hmm. that has to happen. Okay, and if that happens, uh, then sky's the limit on what could happen in terms of influencer marketing in, in terms of how you can you can earn as a creator you know as a as a as a partner like 
like uh, all these gaming publishers even right they have these partner programs where you're a creator and then you and they they give you information in, in advance and you get to create content so okay. for for gaming uh, so so for mobile so mobile gaming has had like a huge head start in in uh, and pc gaming hasn't had that yet so i'm hoping that with riot coming in that pc gaming uh, will have that head start but mm-hmm. when it comes to adoption of consoles i think it's still um i i, I don't know it, it, it's it's the pricing is the issue here you know cuz a playstation 5 is like 50k and an yeah. xbox is what 35 oh no it's about 50 45 if you get the tv ps5 equivalent if you get the cheaper xbox series x which is what most 35. people will probably get no but that doesn't have the the same hardware it has less hardware so yeah. it's not a comparison to the ps5 no no it's not but it's still the cheapest entry entry to console gaming with yeah. an Xbox Game Pass you could still play everything right, right. maybe not as the, at the highest settings or whatever yeah yeah i think But, you're only limited to maybe 2k i think on that console yeah and, and that's fine like i think it's a good start that microsoft has done this right and mm. uh, at least for india so right. uh, what was the cost of the ps4 back back in the day it was what was about 45k right? 42 40 yeah yeah i think yeah Uh, I think when Vinay got his, his dad gave him this like tuppy of fifty thousand rupees to go to the Sony store and buy a PS4, and then. Um... Right. So what I'm trying to say is, okay, so this generation the console has become slightly cheaper. Right. So if if the pricing of consoles keeps dropping every generation, adoption rates would be higher. I mean, we have mm-hmm. to understand that like, thirty five thousand rupees is still a lot of money in India. that's like a salary for like a person like, yeah. like an entire yeah. month salary and yeah. that could mean like uh four months of savings before i can buy an xbox uh base series okay mm. so and like, then the games yeah. at 4000 5000 oh, yeah. yeah that's like a that's the problem. problem i think my issue with i think console space is that the games are too expensive yeah yeah, yeah. but with xbox game pass and stuff See, like that that is the game changer Yeah. For what? Yeah. For 3 400 bucks a month you get access to yeah. so many games. Yeah. I mean it's crazy. I have it and I'm like constantly like shocked that I can play this game for yeah. this basic subscription. Yeah. Like yeah. dude, I played one game off it, like one AAA title game, but like one big game and I've made up my subscription for like you know, the whole like a whole so, year. Yeah. So my argument for consoles is right now getting into PC gaming if you yeah. if you're like like if you're just like you don't have anything and you want to get into one type of gaming getting into mobile gaming is obviously the easiest yeah mm. okay but the next easiest thing is console game mm. because with graphic cards being really expensive no one it's very difficult to get a gpu at msrp uh right. you're not going to be able to get into pc gaming at an affordable range it's it's enthusiast at best you know yeah yeah, yeah. what are, about what about stuff like stadia um if input if, lag what's up i mean uh for the con- that particular concept is good but like if you have to bring it to india it's a little shaky because internet has to be like you know steady enough for that yeah, but and i feel systems. like i was actually surprised with uh how much the internet scene has improved here yeah it oh, has no, improved it's crazy yes. it's crazy yeah, here yeah. i'm getting better speeds here than i think some of my friends in the us get And yeah. they're paying like a hundred dollars a month for their internet there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like dude. Exactly. Like, so if there is a rate of growth for twenty five dollars a month, I get like what is it like four hundred, five hundred Mbps unlimited down like. Okay. Again, see, tier one cities will be fine, but tier two, tier yeah. three cities, which yeah. are still running on BSNL and Hathaway, mm. might chug mm. along. So it, infrastructure has a long way to go for like Stadia right. to be like widely adopted. But yeah. again, niche market. Yeah, it it'll, it'll work, you know. No, but uh, plus there's an input lag, right? The average latency they tested was 250 plus, I think. Like So it's it's yeah. weird, right? Uh if you get the if you get Hitman 3 on the Nintendo, um what it does is it downloads 6, 600 MB of the game and then you stream it. So it's basically like stadium. Right, right, right. And you get PC level ultra graphics. on a freaking nintendo it's mind blowing like other yeah. i'll come over and show you one day it's crazy okay that you can do this and 
and i run it on my like broadband which i have 300 mbps act i don't even have 1 gbps to be to be frank cuz i'm not a streamer anymore i'm like yeah. why <laughs> like who i have that <laughs> but yeah i i think i think stadia could would, would work or could work right. once the technology is figured out or the, or the routing is good in in tier 1 cities mm. tier 2 tier 3 like i i have my doubts <laughs> Right, right, right. Wait, wait. Right. You're saying I need a 1 Gbps connection to be a streamer? Is that why I don't get that many viewers? Yes. I need better internet. <laughs> yes. That's what. There you go, guys. Brass That's it. number one. This finally. Yeah. Five yeah. thousand bucks it, a month. <laughs> this get message was brought to you by ACT. <laughs> no, yeah. We'll clip this. We'll clip call, this. Call, yeah. call your local broadband dealer and tell him, like, bro, views name is real. Bandwidth, put out. So yeah, I guess I mean see um uh these are some of the core themes that I wanted to touch on with this with this conversation I think. It was uh a little more on the serious side I guess because we were trying to have some uh interesting questions with interesting answers but um I guess one last thing that I'd like to touch on how are you guys with time? Do you want to wrap it up now? Um are we are we done with one hour? Do we hit an hour? Yeah, we hit an hour. Yeah, so I guess one thing that I might want to close off with is um your outlook on the industry here right now in India. Um Booming. what's something? Okay. <laughs> no, no, continue, continue. What, what did you say? No, no, continue. Booming. <laughs> yeah, boom. <Booming. laughs> no, I was going to say what's one thing that you don't like about it and what's one thing that you like about it with what's happening in India for gaming. Rohan can go first. <laughs> It's a tough question. This is tricky for me because I work in the industry. Yeah. Right. Mm, so I guess another way to phrase it is what's one thing you're really looking forward to improve or fix? Yeah. One thing that you know, you really like hmm. that's going right right now. Honestly, um there's a there's a lot that can be fixed. So like I don't know where to start. right uh but uh i think the most important thing is that um mm, i think i think brands gaming brands need to start being a lot more honest with their customers that's very important and when you when you sort of work with like gaming influencers you need to be more flexible with with your product reviews like right right yeah you know, uh you cannot you know the one thing that i didn't like as when i was a product reviewer was having to omit stuff from my script which i knew was true you know and uh because it could hurt sales yeah and uh and so so that's that's a huge problem for me right okay um and I don't know like I I feel like that that's one thing uh that needs to change and another thing is that there's a lot of gaming brands who do not pay on time. They do not pay their creators. A lot of big creators have been screwed over and uh mm. no one's talking about this. Mm. Okay? Mm. And it's it's a it's a huge problem and I don't know why this is happening. There's no reason why this should be happening. Okay? Uh like because these are not large sums of money okay right. in fact in the in the in the deals where it is a large sum of money it generally gets cleared right. okay on time right but it's like the smaller creators who are dealing with the 1 lakh mm. like per month kind of like you know payouts they're not getting their money and do what the fuck dude how how are you i don't know how brands are like okay with this like that's that's not cool dude you have right. to pay you have to pay creators if, if if they're working for you mm-hmm. um and the third thing is is on the creators creators need to be a lot more professional <laughs> than yeah. they are cuz uh it's not just the creators it's the creators managers as well like there's there's so much room for improvement right and and i've 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 uh, in my experience over the last couple of years i i've heard the most ridiculous rate cuts with no justification right fuck all justification <laughs> okay and i'm just like how how right. how, how do you have the fucking 
like kaha se aaya itna confidence yeah like where are you getting these numbers from no 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 i want 10 <laughs> lakhs and 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 so like do you think it's, it's just a matter of time or do you think there needs to be like a whole mindset change or like direction change of direction so right now when it comes to like creators working with brands and brands working with creators it's like the wild west right there's no like i think in the entertainment industry and fmcg uh markets where there's like influencer marketing and all that there are like certain like rates which are like market accepted yeah you yeah. know um but in in the gaming sector it's it's fluctuating like massively because you'll have like maybe an international gaming brand coming in just like raising the ceiling of prices which is great for everybody all mm. the creators it's great but right. for the brands for the for the indian competing brands it's like wait why are you doing this <laughs> you're ruining it for all of us you know so like yeah. so there's a there's a lot of like fluctuation going on and creators don't know what prices that they should be charging influencer managers are just trying to get their 20% 30% and yeah. and then they make people sign like the most ridiculous contracts uh right and these are kids a lot of i mean i i, I won't say these are kids but a lot of these people they don't know what contracts they're signing and i've in my experience i've had a lot of creators come to me and say is this a good contract and it just takes me 2 minutes to realize that they're being shafted mm. and i'm like please don't ever sign this you know um so it's right now it's it's a huge mess mm. it'll take some time for it to like stabilize right. and for people to become more aware i think we need a content creator who can who will openly talk about this stuff mm. <laughs> oh, right. it's not going to be me i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's wrong but what's right is that as adit said it's booming we have uh, a lot of big gaming uh, publishers coming to the country we have mm. tos making act- like great tournaments actually paying their players mm. uh you know uh esports is starting to like slowly formalize there's still a lot of like uh, rockiness with uh you know roster transfers and still like that i feel yeah. esports players in india can can really need to start taking their contracts seriously Excuse and me. esports yeah. orgs need to start giving them good contracts that they don't right. feel like tearing every 3 months you know you can't right. have a sustainable e- esports system if you're just going to be with a team for for freaking 3 months okay that doesn't yeah. work how does that right. work so uh yeah so but things are things are really looking up and there's a lot yeah. of job opportunities and yeah. there's a lot of good uh, live streaming mm-hmm. platforms that are coming out and supporting streamers Yeah. Uh so yeah I I think it's 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 a great time to be a gaming creator or to yeah. be in the gaming space even if you're working in the background. You don't even have to right. be in front of a camera. Right. For sure. What about you man? Armand? Oh, uh, well, you know I was just actually speaking of booming, I just my dad sent me this article. Right? He knows I'm a streamer obviously. So he sent me this thing that's in the newspaper. Swedish esports company buys Play Simple. Who's Play mm. Simple here for 360 million dollars? I heard that. Who the hell? That's that crazy. I, that. I actually, I actually just um, so we've been we've been trying to look out for certain um, you know players in the industry uh, just in terms of recently we heard about Lumakai, which is a sector based VC, just really fo- just focusing in on gaming and interactive media. If I'm not wrong, I think they were involved. I think that's the first one in India, and I think um, they were involved in the in the play simple deal. If I'm not wrong. Um. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That was a big one. That was a big one. Yeah. Uh, well, I think in the terms one of before team... that was the one with the loco, I think. Loco, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't... Armand, you were saying? No, I don't know. In terms of good, I think the numbers are great. I think a lot of people are, you know, viewership is going up for a lot of people. Uh, it yeah. used to be that, you know, when I started watching this stuff, what, Jags would have a hundred viewers, and then like PC Peasants would have like thirty, forty, and yeah. you know all the other channels like didn't even exist and i think a lot of the channels have come so far in such a like short time period where now you see guys like raka who has like he has like 5000 people watching him at like 3 in the morning you know <laughs> yeah 10000 yeah. on like pcos yeah, yeah. Uh, he's like hitting like 10k at some points and i think the numbers are looking fantastic um right. and so it seems one thing i like i think the numbers are great uh especially if 
you don't speak English or <laughs> I'm a little bitter about it, but it's okay. Um, now, um, and then one thing I don't like is, um, I guess the obsession with Valorant, you know, I was just like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, bro. <laughs> like think, everyone watches yeah. Valorant, you guys are streaming Valorant for like 12 hours a day. I'm like, can you play yeah. something else? Like, good Lord. But I mean, it's because there is the hope that it becomes an esport and right, in right. India and it becomes mainstream because Valorant, I think, is the second closest we've gotten to a PC esports. Yeah. Like, first would have been CSGO, but then we had CSGO, Optic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me started. Yeah, dude, dude. <laughs> Wait, dude, do, you guys have an, do you guys have an opinion or anything like, you know, opinion about the whole optic situation because i think that is what killed the csgo scene for india like in terms of them going abroad also playing LAN tournaments over there uh, every, and i every, think that was months, one reason every few months it comes up every few months yeah. it comes up and i yell at rohin and he yells back at me <laughs> <laughs> and so I that's a whole even, other topic i well yeah. my opinion is that it ruined indian csgo and it literally killed the scene and that was the end of Optic. We had a good shot at other orgs coming in. If we could get a good roster together, have a good run. And it killed yeah. it. It absolutely killed it. Uh, and it's unfortunate. Um, that. But I also feel like, you know, stick it out. Maybe another org comes in. But I don't know how a whole, like, region's reputation gets, like, tarnished. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it feels weird. It's like they were looking for any reason to, like, jump out as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure, they put in money. Sure, they had maybe there was a thing, but like the rest of the roster was cleared, right? So you just replace yeah. the guy and you continue on. And you I think it was like the, the money, speed, yeah. and then all of a sudden you just like dip. You're like, no, nope, sorry, India's closed. I, um, I think I think Reddit killed CSGO in India. Yeah, in India. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, just, much. I, I don't understand how you just dip after that. I, mean, I understand you've already put in the money, you've already yeah. sent them to boot camp, you put them in multiple tournaments, you're paying them. You rented a house out for these guys to like stay in everything, and then all of a sudden, I mean, I understand, but cheat, see, like cheat, they're acting like cheating has never happened in CSGO ever. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the game has a history of cheaters, right? Yeah. Like people got banned like live in a LAN event right. or on an online. Like what Kukli got fucked? What is banned? Is that like mid Dust yeah, yeah. game? You know, yeah. they've caught that team Akuma right now. Like they, they, everybody knows they cheated. Like 15 teams signed a petition and nobody gives them shit. I mean, they're still like competing. And I, I still, I don't know. It seems a little weird that Optic would spend all the money it did. And then mm. immediately just like a day after, you know, or a couple mm. days after this whole scandal. Yeah, we're leaving India. Sorry. Like we're done. Yeah. And so, I don't know. It seemed a little weird to me. Like, I don't know. I think it was just like a trial and, you know, uh, trial and testing error for even like organizations out, outside India to kind of, you know, test the market over here and see how it behaves. I think that was around the time when Optic kind of like, you know, dipped their feet in the water and uh, tried out, let's see, like, you know, how the Indian teams are going to perform. And this was the, uh, because at the end of the day, when they look at it, even the, I think the owner of Optic, I don't remember his name, like there was a podcast where he was yeah. infuriated about it. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, you know, if it, if he was physically present over there, he would have probably punched him or something. The one no. who cannot be named. No, no, that, yeah. that guy's a big talker. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but, but like that dude, like, how do you, how do you pull out of the, an entire subcontinent, a market of 1.3 billion people because you yeah. hired one wrong dude? Do you know what I mean? Like, you are looking at a market of a billion people where you can appeal. You are like Indian CSGO savior, right? You're an international org coming in, giving Indian yeah. chance to compete on an international stage, right? And it wasn't even that. I mean, it's still an Indian roster, except for, I think, what, YB was, like, German, I think? Yeah, yeah. The only guy there, it, yeah. right? And it was still primarily an Indian roster. So the talent's yeah. there to win, mostly, apart from that guy, <laughs> <laughs> apart from Forsaken, but the talent was there to compete, right? But you hire one wrong guy and all of a sudden you just decide to like abandon the entire continent. Like they're not even Asia anymore, I think. Yeah. Right. And I, I don't know. I feel like maybe they overstretched and they were already thinking about pulling the plug. Hmm. And then eventually they got the slightest opportunity to do so. And then they did. Hmm. Because a lot of East these gaming companies, a lot of them don't make money. 
in fact mm. I, yeah. that's that's what i feel like i feel like uh, no other no other esports org was actually really looking at india like i, I haven't heard i didn't hear that any other org apart from optic was looking at india at least from mm. the the people in the industry that i've spoken to like like people from afk and people like around like everybody who was yeah. connected in the csgo scene mm. nobody ever mentioned like say a tsm or a whoever you know yeah yeah uh, right. and fanatic and tsm came for pubg so like yeah they came for pubg yeah so like and the tsm has now announced their free fire roster as well so like yeah it's i it just there was you hear rumors like vitality we heard the rumor and you know and now we know they're here and vitality was looking to form like a i think content a, a creation PUBG. team yeah no no it was it was a pubg team first and then pubg got banned or something like that but mm-hmm. the the point is like apart from optic i hadn't heard of any other team so like it's a bit of a stretch to say that this is what killed in in csgo i don't i don't know if it's right to say that uh it definitely like set it back like 5 10 years yeah um maybe 5 years but like i don't know if it, it it was like the final nail because i don't think there were there was any sort of like interest in the region because mm. frankly we don't have the talent right other like do we uh, it's it's debatable i think we had enough to yeah. compete in asia i don't i don't think you're anywhere close to making it to the major don't get me wrong mm. yeah uh, but we could have been in the southeast asia area maybe you know we could have been competitive yeah um, we're definitely not playing against you know navi and winning <laughs> and, and <laughs> like you, a round you know and you na's dead nacs is dead right now yeah, right yeah. The, whole, the region collapsed because all these washed up guys switched to valorant and then because of the pandemic apparently they blamed that na teams had no good teams to scrim against hmm. and so there were no results online and without the results the, like i guess i don't i really don't know how much like to like the organ organizations depend on prize money do you know i mean you figure they they don't because of the amount of salaries they're paying anyway that the prize yeah. money would be a very small amount so even if you're losing you figure these guys still have you know the money to like it's weird like i don't i keep it going i, I did i study finance and if you don't have the capital to run for 6 8 10 months you know how how thinly how tightly strung are you right? right where you can't pay salaries for a year for a pandemic you know what i mean like what you're yeah. playing online cs the presence is there the visibility is still there mm-hmm. but they're like oh because we're losing fuck it we're out you know and i i don't understand that yeah. and they're just like teams are just dumping their rosters and they're like ah oh, screw it and then everyone all these na guys who need a fucking paycheck started going to valorant and that's mm-hmm. what happened. So in terms of talent, I think India had a decent amount to compete in SEA, but uh not not anything more than that. Not not without the resources being put into proper boot camps, good PCs, top of the line PCs, and then yeah. also again um good teams to practice against. And then you know, it's one of those things, man. We have a lot I of guess, cheap- Yeah. I mean I guess as as more publishers and and more brands and and in general the gaming scene kind of uh takes its rise in the market I think um even from a roster point of view uh you know hopefully there's uh there's a rise and not just over here even if it takes some time I still think you know just like if, even if we're talking about the general market and the general industry with uh an upward trend I think it it could be synonymous with our competitive scene as well i don't know with the rosters that go in for certain titles it's just a matter of time i think is you know people you know um get into that scene we we've such a huge population here um and as it evolves and as the sophistication increases i think you know i think the outlook still remains positive um i don't oh, know 100%. I look at it. yeah 100% we, it's still yeah. positive it's just that csgo might not be right the right. the game going forward right and it right. takes me off because that's my favorite game yeah so yeah that's why fair enough fair enough but yeah um so you know uh in general uh i'm 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 looking forward to seeing how the market is just going to climb um i think it's just a matter of time i think some some somewhere around the corner there's going to be a boom it's happening uh but i think there's going to be something exponential happening and 
and whatever we're trying to do with lobby zero um you know um we're we're really trying to uh, make our mark and try to do something with the the growing scene in india and um at the end of everything i really just want to thank you guys uh for for coming on uh for having this if chat us. yeah absolutely man absolutely you guys, um man. you guys uh every, anybody who's watching absolutely go check uh out PC presence, uh, they're they're out there grinding right now. Um, I, I guess are you are you focusing on like any specific title at the moment, like or are you? No, I, I I hate I hate playing the same game over and over again. I hate doing right. it. Uh, right. So what I try to do is I try to keep it fresh. I want people to see different games. Like today, I played Iron Harvest. Uh, mm. It's a game nobody knows, nobody's even heard of it, but it's a great game. It's on Xbox right. Game Pass. I was like, it's great. It's a co-op RTS game, you know, uh, right. with mechs and like. World War One Russian soldiers. It's 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 awesome. Right. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, little diesel punk, steampunk. I think would be the gotcha. category. Gotcha. Nobody knows, so I guess, but yeah. you know, all those things. So. Yeah. So I guess variety is the name of your game. Um, but uh, everyone should go uh, check PC Pens out. Um, we had a great uh, episode. A lot of topics. We talked about a lot of things. Uh, I learned a lot. Honestly. Lots of editing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's gonna be uh, quite a bit of editing. But um, thanks, guys. Uh, so uh, next week, we're probably going to have like a, a midway. We're basically halfway through our six-month roadmap, which is what we set out when we started off. So next week, we're going to hit three months. So we're just going to have... I was thinking we just have like a, a, a team episode where we're just chatting about whatever we've managed to do over the past three months and what the scene is going forward. So uh, awesome. yeah. Yeah, it's so good. thanks guys for joining in. Uh, this is Lobby Zero signing out. Peace out, guys. Oh, coordinated. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>